Um, hello, everyone. My name is Tejas Patel. I'm a registered migration agent um, here at Aussie's group, um, and I'll be covering up the state nomination requirements and the updates from South Australia. So I'll just see if we have enough people to start this session. Um, all the questions I'll be answering as well um, towards the end of the session. Um, so we have anything between 45 to uh, 60 minutes, and I'll try to cover up as much as I can um, in this session. So I'll be covering up the, the requirements from the state nominations um, for 190 and 491 visa, and all the, the updates, if I have any updates um, as well. Um, so let's start on without wasting any much time. Um, All right, so that's it. Um, so there will be two different visa subclasses. Obviously, a lot of people have joined different sessions earlier um, through different state nominations from our other migration agents as well. Um, so just quickly covering up the two different visas uh, we will be covering up in state nomination updates. Uh, number one is the state nominated 190, and number two is the re regional sponsored 491. Um, 190 visa is a state nominated permanent visa which allows the international um, or skilled migrants um, to allow uh, to stay and work in um, the nominated state. Um, there is no conditions on your visas. Um, there is a moral obligations um, because you'll be getting a nominated um, from that state um, that you'll be staying here for the next two years after the visa is granted. Uh, number two is 491, which is a skilled work regional visa. Um, so this visa is uh, a nominated provisional visa, which allows you to stay in the regional area of Australia for five years. Um, that this visa leads you towards a permanent visa if you meet the requirements after three years of staying and working, which we'll be covering up as well. Um, what is state nomination? So state nomination is basically uh, a program from the state government, um, which basically uh, nominate different high skilled applicants um, to meet the state nomination requirements. Every state has a different economy. Every state has a different employer sets and, and every state will have uh, different skill requirements. Um, some states require higher nurses, some states require higher IT graduates, some state requires more engineers, um, some state requires more people in hospitality because their economy is tourism based economy. So you have to understand what is the state requirements and then state will decide um, their migration program according to the, the, the market or the labor market requirements. Um, for any international students, so any graduates from South Australia um, who have studied here, obviously they will be able to apply for the PR um, or provisional visa through this program 190 or 491. Um, the biggest benefit of any state nomination program is there is an extensive list of occupations available. So there is uh, there are two different occupation lists, uh, three actually. Uh, long term list, which is MLTSSL, short term list, um, and then there is a regional occupation list. The beauty about state nomination is um, the state can pick uh, occupations from this three list depending on the requirements. So some states can sponsor the occupation which are in the regional occupation list as well, such as dentist, um, or even they can sponsor which is in the long term list as well, such as software engineers or, in, uh, or normal engineers like a, a mechanical engineer. Um, so they can handpick the requirements um, depending on the economy or what they would like to attract in their state, um, depending on the, the employer's suggestions or the feedbacks to them. Um, and then they decide the occupation list. Um, the state nomination programs gives you 10 points um, for 491 or five points for um, 190. So you, yeah. you get the additional points for your state nomination programs. Um, you will be eligible for additional concessions or waivers if you are an SA graduate. I'll cover up the, the definition of South Australian graduate later on as well. So someone who have studied in South Australia uh, will be considered as an SA graduate as long as they meet the requirements, which we'll be covering up later on as well. Um, so you do have additional list of occupations available. You do have uh, more concessions and waivers available if you have um, studied and you meet the SA, defini SA graduate definition as well. Um, let's talk about the minimum requirement for any state nomination. So this is the minimum requirement um, of 190 or 491 that you must be under age of 45. Your occupation must be on the state nomination list. Uh, you must have a skill assessment for migration purposes, not for graduate visa or not for any other purposes. 
So you must have a full skill assessment, which is suitable for migration purposes. A lot of students or applicants would have skill assessment for their provisional skill assessment for graduate visas or even TSS purpose as well, or even DAMA visa as well. That is not acceptable for the skill, uh, skill migration program. So you must have a full skill assessment for migration purposes. Um, and you also need to meet the state nomination requirement for work experience um, if you your occupation requires that. So I'll be covering up that later on as well. Obviously, you need to meet the minimum English requirement, which is six each. If you get more, you get more points. Um, so depending on your um, total point requirements for your occupation, you need to make sure that you have six or over. So some occupation requires seven, some requires eight, depending where you apply for. Uh, from either if you're an offshore applicant, some requires eight bands, in each module of IELTS or PT or equivalent, some requires only six. So, uh, but minimum benchmark is six. Um, you must also meet the points required for each occupation. So, um, the different uh, process for South Australia compared to most of the states here in South Australia, the the immigration South Australia has skilled business and migration. Um, they decide the po the points requirement according to the occupation. So some occupations require 75 points, some occupations require 65, some require seven, uh, 70. So you need to cross check uh, how many points required for your occupation before you apply for your state nomination. Most of them requires only 65 points. Um, some occupations require 75 as well. Um, um, obviously, we'll be applying for 190 or 491, but this is a very uh, common information for a lot of people who are moving to South Australia from interstate or from overseas. Um, in obviously, um, they would be expecting to apply for 190, um, but these are just common information available on Department of Immigration South Australia website as well. Um, it, it covers up that um, both 190 and 491 visa nominations are subject to a limited quota. So I'll be covering up how much, uh, what's the current last year's allocation and what is expected as well in later slides. Um, so South Australia as a state reserves the right to revise the nomination requirements any time of the year. Uh, occupation available for the state nomination are subject to um, each ceiling value as well, which means they might have decided how many nurses they would like to sponsor or how many cooks they, might, uh, they would like to sponsor. So they also reserve the, the right to close or revise the eligibility requirements of that occupation without any notice. They can do that anytime. Um, so the reason I'm covering up this slide is a lot of people move from interstate overseas and then uh, after six months or 12 months, the requirement might change a bit. So they um, they say, OK, when I moved, uh, it was different requirement, but they have as a, as a state, they have covered up this that um, you need to make sure that these requirements can change without any notice. So you need to um, be mentally prepared, basically. Um, as an S, as an authority, as a government can re reserve the right to ask the applicant to withdraw the application or refuse it if the, the requirements are changed and they don't, they no longer meet that new requirements. Uh, published criteria are only indicative, so some some cases they can refuse your nomination, even if you are not if you're meeting all the requirements. Let's say ROI registration of interest for um, high performance graduates, they they've declined to invite a lot of applicants in last three months, even if they meet um, the minimum advertised requirements. So that's up to the uh, the team of the immigration essay and also depending on the profile. So they look at the individual profile. Um, so it. it Whatever you see on the immigration essay website, it's mainly the guide and then depends on the assessment officer um, to assess the application. Uh, so even if you are meeting the 190 requirement, they can offer you 491 in some cases. Um, so I'll cover up some of the key um, suggestions. If you want to target for 190, what you should be doing as well. Um, the requirements for SA graduates can change, SA as an eligibility requirements can change any time. It's subject to direction of the Commonwealth government as well. So Department of Home Affairs can change the migration programs and that eventually will uh, reflect to the state nomination policies as well. In um, today's sessions, I'll be covering up three nomination streams for South Australia. Uh, number one is talent and innovator program. Second is working in South Australia category. This also includes the category which is called long-term resident as well. And number three is international graduate of South Australia who have studied here um, as well. So let's start with number one. Number one is currently working in South Australia stream. So this stream has three sub stream, you can say. Number one is currently working in South Australia, which covers up athlete as well. So if you have, if you work in your nominated or closely nominated occupation in athlete, then you will fall under this category. 
Number two is currently working in regional South Australia. So to, con to be considered for this particular stream, you must be employed and living in out in area which is outside of Greater Adelaide. Um, and if you are targeting for 190, then um, they would prefer that you will be looking at one uh, two years stay unless and until um, you are working in your nominated occupation itself. So I'll cover up that as well. Um, so two years, which is mentioned here, that's general guidelines for long term resident or someone who is working in a regional South Australia, uh, ideally full time if you're targeting for 190. Um, number three is living and working in SA as a long term resident. So um, under the long term resident as well, there are three different options, uh, international graduates and partners. Uh, other temporary visa holders such as 482 or any other visas or safe haven enterprise visa holder which is uh, in a protection visa or any other visas um, normally in the long-term resident stream um, they are only eligible for 491 um, except the uh, option number one in some cases they can make an exception for 190 but uh, it's very hard uh, unless and until you have very strong profile working in your nominated occupation for a long time but in most of the cases uh, you will be falling under the dis different stream if you are working in your field of um, studies anyway um, so normally if you're not working in your, uh, in your field of studies then you'll be eligible only for 491. Um, <clears throat> part of that second stream is the international graduates of South Australia so someone who has studied in South Australia will be considered as an essay graduate. But to be an essay graduate, uh, what you need to make sure is um, your course is a CRI course registered and it must be at least 46 weeks or more. Um, more than 50 percent of your course must have completed from South Australia. So if you have done, let's say, two years of master's or three years of uh, bachelor's, you need to make sure that 50 percent of that has been completed in South Australia. It has to be at least one year. So let's say if you do 1.5 years of master's and you only do half of that in Adelaide, then you won't be meeting the requirements. Um, you'll have to stay at least one year um, during the studies and meet the requirements. You must have continuously resided in South Australia post your studies as well to be considered as an essay graduate. So um, you can't uh, move to a different state and then apply from there as an essay graduate. You need to make sure that you continuously stay staying in South Australia post your studies as well. Um, the, uh, the other requirement, obviously, you need to meet um, the Department of Home Affairs requirement for 491 or 190 and other nomination requirement as well. And also you need to make sure that you meet the course requirement for minimum qualifications, um, which is listed against your occupation. Some occupations, especially skill level, let's say two requires diploma or higher, which is advanced diploma or social degree. Uh, skill level one will require bachelor or higher. Um, so you need to make sure that you meet those requirements. So um, Giving an example, um, if you have studied Masters of IT interstate um, or overseas, and if you do Diploma of IT here, you won't be considered as an essay graduate because the minimum requirement of that particular occupation in IT would be bachelor or higher. So you need to study bachelor, uh, graduate diploma in higher education or master's to meet the essay graduate requirements because um, the minimum requirement of education listed against your occupation would be bachelor or higher. But if you work as if you have a skill assessment as a chef interstate and you want to be an essay graduate and you study one year of advanced diploma of uh, hospitality or management or uh, diploma of hospitality management, um, then it's fine because the requirement would be diploma or higher. So you need to cross track what is the, the minimum education requirements against your occupation to make sure that you meet the essay uh, graduate definition uh, um, against the immigration essay requirements. Um, they also need to make sure that they do meet the minimum work experience requirement against each occupation as well. Some occupations do offer waivers, some occupations don't offer any waivers, so you need to meet at least three months or six months or 12 months, whatever is listed against your occupation. Because obviously the, the popular occupation will require higher experience such as accountants, cooks, chef, restaurant managers or a lot of other ones. Um, some very uh, popular as in not it is in demand, but not many applicants apply. Those occupations will require less experience, such as diesel mechanic or a um, lot of fabrication occupations and stuff as well. So that might not require you to have longer experience. Um, so it's case to case against your occupation. Um, any experience which is part of the PhD will not be considered as a skilled experience. So you cannot use that towards meeting your essay graduate definition and the post-study experience requirement for an essay graduate application. 
Um, anyone who is applying through high performance graduate must apply through ROI, which is registration of interest, and it falls under the talent and innovator program. So we'll be covering up that very shortly as well. If you're working part time, when I say part time, which is less than 35 hours uh, consistently, then they will be offering only 491 in most of the cases. Um, if you want to apply for 190, then target for 35 hours or more full as in full time job. In the talent and innovator programs, there are different streams as well. So in talent and innovator, there are five stream. Um, number one is employment stream. Um, the employment stream is for someone who can, who is obviously an essay graduate or who is also an interested graduate or overseas applicant as long as they meet these requirements. This is um, ideally for someone who is a high skilled migrant who are working for a South Australian based business um, and the business has to be operating in these priority sectors. So South Australia as a state have created this um, about nine list of industries um, which is a priority growth industry for them. Um, or it is connected indirectly or directly to them. So number one is creative industry, defense industry, energy and mining, food, wine and agribusiness, health and medical, high tech, international education, space industry and tourism. So if your business or employee is operating in this business is directly or indirectly, uh, you'll be considered in the employment stream um, and you need to meet the other requirements. The minimum requirements for the English is proficient plus, but it's case to case that they do make an exception if you have less than this. Uh, number two uh, category in um, talent and innovator itself is the outer regional South Australia workforce stream. So this is specially designed for regional employers to uh, meet the requirements for low skilled workers as well. Um, this is for someone who is based in regional South Australia. There is a list of postcodes available on department's website. Um, this is for someone who do not qualify to apply for direct state nomination um, in any other stream, uh, but they still want to apply through uh, a submission. So you need to provide a letter of support from your employer and submission outlining why you should be considered for this state nomination for 491. And the, the Department of Immigration as in South Australia will um, consider your application case to case basis. So um, this programs allows you to apply for your state nomination 491 earlier than 12 months. Um, normally you need to stay in regional for 12 months, work in a skilled occupation um, if you want to be invited for 491. But this is the program where a lot of interested graduates can come in to regional South Australia work in uh, regional South Australia with different employers, make sure you try to get a skilled job rather than a very retail jobs so or very low skilled employment um, and see if you uh, will be considered earlier because of your visa is expiring or because your role is so critical, your employer doesn't want to lose you, a lot of other reasons. Um, so you need to get a letter of, of support from your employer um, submitting the details why they should be considering the nomination for you. Um, third stream in the talent and innovator program is a startup and small business stream. Um, this is something where a lot of people from Queensland or Tasmania says SBO, small business ownership. Um, this skills, this particular stream requires, it is basically designed for someone who is uh, a skilled migrant, but with an entrepreneurial skills. So someone who wants to start up their own business in South Australia. Um, the minimum requirement is obviously your business must be able to give you a personal income that would meet the tax threshold, which is 53,900, the minimum taxable threshold, the Smith requirement. Um, business must be aligned with the priority growth industry as well. So someone who has a business in these uh, nine industries will be getting a priority as well uh, for this particular stream. Uh, business employees, at least two empl uh, employees will be uh, getting a priority as well. So someone who has a, a small business in regional or in Adelaide, have full full time two full time employees will be getting a priority as well. Any uh, business owners who works on um, ABN partnership uh, company has to apply through this. A lot of people in IT, a lot of people in um, accounting as well sometimes, or in um, freelancing like marketing, designing engineering, consulting base. They do work on a sole trader businesses. So the the those applicants need to apply through this particular stream. Unfortunately, the franchisees businesses are not eligible. So if you own a franchisee of a, a national business, then you won't be eligible to apply through this stream. Um, this is very interesting uh, program for all the graduates from South Australia. Number four in the talent and innovator is high performance graduate stream. 
So for high performance graduate stream, um, normally the requirements will be um, occupation to occupation, but then you must have completed at least um, two years of studies. Um, from within last two years, you must have completed bachelor or masters. Um, the studies can be one year or higher. Um, as the essay graduate definition, minimum 50% of your qualification must be from South Australia. And also you must have um, a qualification which is um, in, in field of your skill assessment itself. So you cannot have different um, skill assessment and your studies from South Australia is in different field. So giving the example, let's say you, can, you might not be able to apply for this stream if you have MBIS as a study, Master of Business Information System, and your nominal occupation is an engineer or um, accountant or something else. Um, so if you want to be considered for this particular stream as a high performance graduate stream, your studies from South Australia must be relevant to your nominated occupation itself. You must be currently living in South Australia post your qualification as well. So you, you need to make sure that if you want to be considered for this stream, you continuously living and working in South Australia. Obviously, there is no work experience requirement for high performance graduate stream. Uh, but then if you have relevant work experience as an ongoing job, that will obviously give you more priority compared to other peer, other uh, applicants, um, because obviously this stream attracts a lot of applicants. So uh, at the time of the assessment department will look at um, the, the more quality, the more points you have, um, the more relevant employment you have will get a more priority. Applicant would require to have at least proficient English. Um, if you can get higher, that's much better. Um, they can make an exception case to case basis, but then uh, try to have at least proficient English. The field of education would be um, priority if, if, if you have in certain field, including the health, na uh, natural physics, science, and all those kind of thing. Um, your previous studies and work experience may be considered case to case. So if you want to have a, a very strong profile for the high performance graduate stream, and if you have done masters here, then you should consider having your bachelor assessed or all your experience documents assessed um, and provide that as part of your application with high GPA uh, program as well. So that will create a, a stream of very strong application where it shows you have relevant qualification from overseas, you have relevant qualification from here, and also you have relevant experience from overseas. So you as a skilled applicant, uh, there are high likely chance you'll end up getting a job in your field. So it's better for the immigration South Australia or any state to nominate you and retain you in that particular state. Um, it, it 190 or 491 is case to case basis, but mostly it's 491 for high performance graduate stream unless and until you have more than six GPA and relevant field of employment in, in regards to getting a 190 nomination. Uh, they have done 190 last year when they started this program, but then mostly it's only been 491 if you don't have a job. Um, you also need to provide a short summary of the skills and expertise you would be um, bringing in in South Australia as a state. You need to provide a research or at least a, a bit of ideas about all this nine industry that how your experience, your skills uh, will be considering, will be contributing towards this particular state's um, create the, the priority sector group. Um, good thing about the PhD graduates or masters by research is you can apply as soon as you have uh, a qualification finished. So um, you, you'll be going straight through the pathways. Uh, normally for PhD graduates or masters by research, uh, they can nominate you for 190 as well. If you have done masters, masters by coursework, the, co the master's degree must be 78 weeks um, and your grade points will be averaged. Um, six plus GPA uh, is normally required in most of the cases. If you want to get um, considered for 491, um, again, the enterprise requirement was five. We are still waiting for the new requirements to come out as well. The applicants with higher GPA will be always getting, will be getting more priority. So if you have good GPS, uh, you should definitely try to get good score in English and see if you can get nomination in this stream if you don't have a job. Applicants with first class honors in dedicated honors years, um, they need to also make sure that they have the honors completed post the bachelors, 92 weeks or more bachelors. Um, if you have done bachelor, then uh, the bachelor degree must be at least 92 weeks course register, which is only two years. Normally bachelor will be three years or four years. So at least two years or higher. Your grade points will be averaged, and obviously grade point average six or higher is generally required unless specified in your occupation, which I said some occupation requires only five or more, some requires six. So um, the more GPA you have, the more English score you have will be always priority um, to you. 
The last stream in the talent in the innovator stream is independent talent stream. So normally anyone who is applying through, um, um, if you're not eligible for any other stream, then you'll be falling under this stream, to be honest. Um, but then you would be considered a case to case basis. This is primarily for high caliber applicants. Um, you'll be required to stay in South Australia as a, at the time of application. You should be in South Australia. You need to have at least 95 points. So 95 points includes five points from the state uh, on the skill select. Lower points can be considered case to case basis. You're expected to have at least proficient plus English um, 7.5 or higher. Um, they can consider less English as well in some cases. Um, you need to provide again a detailed uh, submission as well that how your skills and experience will contribute towards the South Australian economy and especially um, priority growth, uh, growth sector, those nine uh, sectors they are focusing on. Um, in most of these cases, um, they would be required you to have um, three to five years of experience for independent talent stream. Recent graduates can apply as well as, as long as they have a job in this field and they have good English. But um, to be honest, it's better to apply into the employment stream or other stream um, to get invited for different visas than the independent talent stream. Um, independent talent stream would be primarily focused for offshore applicants and um, interstate applicants as well who wants to come here first, don't have a job, but then they have 95 points and they already have proven experience interstate overseas and they can prove that they will be a talent to those core sectors. Um, if you talk about the, the migration program planning year, so obviously this financial year, which is 2022-23, we will be having 160,000 places. Um, skill migration will be the biggest, which is 109,900. Um, that will include, um, obviously that will assist us um, to improve the product. Uh, productive cap, uh, you know, capacity of the economy and fill a lot of skill shortages in regional areas, especially um, in a smaller states, um, including the regional South Australia. Um, nomination for state nominations for uh, this financial year, 19491, has been increased from 11,200 to 20,000. To, uh, to 20, um, so this covers up. This is the, the state nomination increase, 20,000. It's only for 491. Um, there is an additional allocation of 25,000 as well. So combined for um, skill migration um, for 190 and 491, including the regional, will be around 45,000 for this financial year. Um, migration planning, planning levels for last year, it was obviously um, for 190, as they nominated around 2,600. Obviously, they didn't end up using, I think, all of the allocations. Um, for 491, they had 3,330. What I expect, they have not announced it yet. What I expect is around similar, maybe 3,000 for 190 or uh, more for 491. I expect that obviously state um, would be continuing their aggressive migration program, especially South Australia, New South Wales, Western Australia and Tasmania, because they have a bigger requirements in terms of the intake. Um, so because we have a higher allocation in this financial year, we are hoping that um, SA will continue its aggressive migration in terms of 190 and 491 for offshore as well as onshore interstate, um, as in interstate applicants who are coming to South Australia and offshore applicants as well. So they will be opening up offshore uh, migration program as well for a lot of occupations. Um, state SA um, for the migration program, they normally have more than 500 occupations in the list. Um, they might not open all of the occupations for offshore applicants, but they will be eventually opening up a lot of occupations with certain requirements. Normally, they require um, eight years experience for most of the um, higher occupations uh, and five years requirements for the trade occupations. Um, so if you are watching this from offshore, you'll be um, you will have some information very shortly about um, the requirements for certain occupations um, being an offshore applicant. Um, key points in any state nomination uh, process, uh, this doesn't apply to just South Australia, it applies to anything um, as in any state. Um, employment in your field will be always a key for any state nomination. Every state has their own priorities, but they will also look at the applicant who is working in this uh, in, in the nominated occupation. Um, state programs are always demand driven, so occupation lists can be changed depending on the local economy feedback. So if um, there are a lot of employers who are struggling and they have a voice as a 
a union or association or whatever and they lobby with the state government then they can change in certain way where the state nomination list can be changed as well so it really depends on the the industry demand as well so state officials obviously uh, decide the each occupation depending on the demands and stuff as well statistics um, as well and so they do compare um, the job outcomes um, job, job advertisement in the market as well that uh, how many nurses are required how many graduates in this area are required or how many trade persons are required how many um, trade in terms of uh, cooks required or you know any occupations they will be looking, they will be deciding according to that um, regional graduates and uh, regional applicants will always get priority so if you are um, a regional graduate studied from regional south australia or um, regional australia in general then you will get more priority in state nominations um, regional applicants who are working in the regional area will also get a priority so let's say if i talk about south australia in general uh, in particular if you're working in regional south australia you'll get a more priority than someone who's working in south australia uh, in adelaide um, so you can always look for employers in in your field if there are jobs available in regional um, that will give you uh, visas faster high points can help but then in most of the cases um, only points will not get you 190 or 491 you should have at least employment or relevant employment in your field of um, studies and field of nominated occupation full-time jobs always get more priority for 190 so you should always look for um, full-time employment opportunities um, if you are in last year of studies always look for internships in your field of studies as well so because eventually it will lead you towards the uh, employment either with the same employer or with different but then you should start working on um, the the employment outcome uh, as soon as you are in last semester because that will give you more uh, opportunity to enter into the workforce once you have a job you'll get uh, more priority in terms of the state nomination as well all right so that ends up my presentation but if you have any um, feedback or just make sure you follow us on um, facebook as well as instagram and you do tag us with these uh, hashtags to win some exciting offers and i'll answer some questions as well so let me quickly go through the questions all right so i've got a lot of questions i'll try to cover up as much as i can um, um, number one is register nurse in aged care at late 491 experience required. Um, hi, Gur, uh, register nurse normally depends on the occupation as in the skill assessment. Um, you need three months of experience, but for 491, it's case to case where you work. Um, in Adelaide itself, it can be three months or depending on the new skill assessment, uh, skill occupation list requirements, we'll find out very shortly. Uh, we are happy, we are expecting to um, get the new updates from immigration essay either this week or early next week. Uh, obviously, Amandeep, that's uh, answer your questions that uh, we are expecting some updates from immigration essay um, this week or next week regarding the new financial year, uh, document, um, the list and the requirements and stuff. What I expect um, from immigration South Australia though is uh, there might not be a lot of policy changes, um, which means um, the requirements might remain same, which I've discussed. Um, it, the, the occupational wise requirement can be changed. So the major policy changes already happened last year. So they might try to retain the same policy settings for at least next two to three years before they make any uh, big changes. So um, what personally I expect in, uh, in, the, in terms of changes, they might change into a long-term resident or they might change into the, um, the SA graduate category as in the, especially the high performance graduate category, because these are the two uh, categories which normally attracts a lot of applicants who might not be working in the field. Um, so if they want to filter it down the numbers, then they will be tapping on these two categories. But um, if they have a bigger migration program, they will be happy to sponsor or nominate as many as possible. Then they will retain the same thing. Um, Need of the CNSC normally requires you to have um, 12 months of experience for 491 or um, two years experience for 190, but um, we will be updating that shortly once we have immigration as a guideline on account like individual occupation wise. So um, if they retain the same requirements, then it will be two years for 190 full time or 12 months for 491. Usman, um, you'll have to give me your occupation details, but then it depends on the occupation to occupation. As long as you work 12 months full time, some occupation do get you 190, but um, yeah, it again, it depends on the occupation, to be honest. Um, 
The next question from Vivek is, I'm living in Victoria in designated regional area, working here, I've done my assessment. Um, Vivek or anyone in general, so basically uh, if you want to apply for uh, South Australia state nomination, first of all, you need to move here, find a job in your field, um, then only you can be considered for 190 or 491. For 491, in some cases, you would be able to apply through working in a regional area, um, even if you're not working in your nominated occupation, but then that's case to case basis. So if you're aiming to get a state nomination from South Australia, you need to make a move here first, and then only you'll be able to apply. Um, staying in interstate um, will not make you eligible for most of the programs here. Um, next is uh, 491 out of regional mechanical engineer with 75 points not doing job in occupational. So again, I've, as I just mentioned, that you can work in any other skilled occupation as well, and then you can get a, a letter from your employer uh, supporting your application. Case to case basis, immigration essay can nominate you as well for 491. Vishy is asking, I'm currently living in Queensland, got MSCIT from Queensland, but working from home for New South Wales companies, it could move to SA for getting a PR in future. Um, so Vishy, you can move to South Australia, but uh, the minimum requirement for you being an interested graduate is 12 months of experience, unless there's any changes coming through. But as of now, uh, you should be targeting to get a job in IT here in Adelaide for at least 12 months if you want to apply for 491. Faiza is an essay promising state to get a relocated for someone who is a lawyer from India. Uh, absolutely. So it depends on your uh, pathway towards the PR and stuff. But then, yeah, as a, a state uh, for the migration program point of view, the, definitely a good state for you to focus on uh, because of the aggressive uh, migration programs, including a lot of occupations. Um, I think South Australia is the only state or along with the uh, Northern Territory, we have large number of occupations on the list. Um, and we do actively nominate most of the occupations, so, which is good. Working in a mechanical field part-time since five months, have skill assessment, graduate of WA, have 80 points, chance the one. Ricky, I think you should better focus on WA itself because for South Australia, you'll have to move here, get a job for six months in mechanical engineering or engineering technologies level, um, and then apply for 491, or you can apply for 190 if you have two years of experience. Um, again, for 190 requirements, uh, I would, I would uh, recommend you to wait for um, a week or two when the immigration essay will come out uh, with their detailed requirements again. Right, if I stay in outer regional area of Adelaide for one year doing any work, will I be eligible for 491? Right, um, it's case to case basis, as I just mentioned in earlier's requirement. Um, it cannot be just any work. Um, ideally, you should target to get uh, more of skilled work to convince uh, immigration essay as well as um, your profile will be much stronger if you have uh, skilled employment. Um, so it, you should target to get a skilled job. Um, accountant, New South Wales, graduate, working in retail industry, regional South Australia currently at 70 points. What are your chances of getting invitation? Um, it depends on your skill assessment, to be honest. You have not mentioned, uh, sorry, accountant, yes. Um, currently 70 points, what are the chances of getting invitation in retail? Um, retail, as a retail manager, then it, it can be a retail buyer. Yes, it's a skilled occupation as well. But if you work as a retail assistant, then it might not be really a skilled occupation. Um, so it will be really a case to case basis. Um, so it depends on your location in South Australia and regional, depends on your employer, what is your submission letter and stuff as well. So it's case to case for you. Studying as an automotive technology in SA, if I will get a job in outer region after my study and work here, yeah, is it possible for 190? Yeah, so if you have studied from South Australia and you do one year of uh, job ready program in regional, yes, you can apply for 190. That's the current requirement, so it, the requirements can be changed. Um, this is a general guidelines, obviously, because uh, it depends on your points, depends on um, working full time or not. Uh, there are a lot of other factors. So um, for detailed migration consultation, you'll have to basically book an appointment to discuss your profile in detail. But this is the, the general guideline that, yes, if you work in a regional for one year, being an SA graduate, then yes, you can apply for 190. Um, is this graduate requirement of residing in SA will change from 50% to 100% in SA? 
meet, um, to be honest, it can, um, because a lot of other states which offers the graduate pathways, um, they expect that you must have finished the whole study in, South, uh, in their state. So South Australia can follow their requirements as well, and they can for, uh, require they require you to have 100% studies in South Australia. Um, so it can be one of the changes in the future. Usman, yes, sir, three and four, commercial cookery, as long as it's combined more than a year, um, it will be considered as a, as a graduate. Um, but then your a nominated occupation needs to be relevant to that study itself. Uh, so you might have to go through your skill assessment and then apply as a cook or chef. Uh, Ricky, ABN work is absolutely fine as long as you have uh, service contracts in place and you, you can provide uh, your accountant letter and all other supporting documents here. Um, Sandeep, if you have eight years of experience, 95 points, that's good points. Um, you might need to get seven each or uh, more in English. Um, there is a good chance once the Depart Black Immigration essay opens up for offshore applicants, you can apply for your ROI. Um, they can consider case-to-case -case basis, but then if you have experience in good international companies um, at a senior level, then there's a high chance you will get through um, um, through the ROI process. Um, someone is asking, uh, what do you suggest about changing course from mechanical to MBIS and stay there in SA? Look, um, changing the course or um, the studies in terms of different occupations, it's case to case basis. But if you have a skill assessment as a mechanical, I would recommend you to um, get a job as a mechanical engineer or technologist or as a draft person for six months. Um, and you should be able to apply for 491 even while you're studying, as long as it's 20 hours a week. Um, so you can meet that requirement to maybe possibly explore your 491 visa option. I did Bachelor of Nursing from New South Wales. How long work experience would be good for me to apply for PR in SA? Um, mostly if you stay in Adelaide, then 12 months for 190, but it's case to case, which occupation in particular as an RN. Um, regional, six months is fine. Again, case to case. Um, minimum points required is 65, so you don't need to worry about the points too much here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's more about the employment. So if you have a job, then you have good chance with the state nomination. Uh, Apurva, you, you can apply probably 491 uh, with that uh, age care experience. And once you have registration as an uh, EN and your skill assessment as an EN, um, so you just need to get that through first um, and then see if you'll be able to use your 12 months of experience as a personal carer. If the, the immigration essay changed that requirement, then you'll have to meet three months of enrolled nurse experience requirements. Um, I'll just, I think we still have about five minutes more. Um, so we, I'll still keep answering the, the questions. I work in outer region, outer Adelaide, and not in my mechanical occupation. How long do I have to be need to be eligible for 75 points, including state? Um, so, Mr. Patel, um, you would be required at least six to 12 months of experience, depending on your um, obviously the employment uh, details, as in job and description, um, but minimum six months um, or at least 12 months. Vaishnavi got invites for 491 SA for electrical engineer in March 2022. Uh, when can I expect the visa grant? Um, Vaishnavi, the visa grant can be case-to-case -case basis, but mostly 9 to 12 months uh, for 491 visa. Some cases getting delayed as well. So department has been really uh, picking up randomly applications in most of the cases. Um, they also uh, prioritize some of the applicants who applied for the bridging visa to travel offshore as well. So, But average time, 9 to 12 months. Brian, I'm a network engineer with one year experience working in Adelaide with 70 points, which is my best option for 190 or, 4, uh, 190 or 491. Um, so Brian, if you are a South Australian graduate, then definitely you should go with 190 because that's more attractive and more better visa for you. Um, if you have not studied here and um, your visa is an issue where you can't wait for 190 requirements to be met, 
then you should um, go with 491. Otherwise, definitely you should apply for 190. If I stay in outer regional for one year, doing any work, will I be eligible for 491? I've just covered up this question earlier as well, that it's case to case, depending on the task and duties you do and the submission letter you provide from your employer. Um, Krishna, I'm working in outer regional as a civil engineer from last eight months. What are your chances for 190? Um, Krishna, if you work full time, then yes, after 12 months, you should be able to get 190, but then uh, part time, uh, mostly 491. Yep, um, Rohan, I'm a mechanical engineer, six years of experience currently in Adelaide on student visa. So Rohan, try to get a job at least for six months um, for 491 or longer for 190. You might be able to apply along with your studies as well. So the good thing about state nomination, especially in Adelaide, is um, even if you have uh, experience along with your studies, um, as long as this is the experience is in a nominated occupation or closely related occupation, you will be able to apply for your state nominations along with even if you're studying. So let's say a lot of students post pandemic um, came to Australia on a student visa, um, even if they already had five years or eight years of experience offshore. So if they end up getting a job here while they're studying the masters or uh, other courses, they they can still apply for the state nomination as long as they meet the minimum advertised requirement, which is some cases six months, some cases 12 months or 491. Um, Saurabh is asking, I'm working in a Greater Adelaide since last 12, uh, 10 months as a web developer. Can I apply for 491 to move from Melbourne? So Saurabh, you can apply after 12 months for 491. For 190, you'll have to wait a bit longer. Um, that's the, the, the current requirement. Sujan is asking, I've done diploma in community services from my workplace and now in working same field here in Adelaide setting and all nurse as well and a chance to get from community or disability field thank you so sujan <clears throat> as a community uh, worker you need to have at least one year of post qualification experience um, now the biggest thing is obviously you need to meet the acw requirements so as long as you have a skill assessment um, through acw then you can apply for your state nomination as a community worker but in a lot of cases um, the applicant might not be working as a community worker but as a carer um, so there is a skill level difference. So if you can't get the skill assessment, then you should stick to your enrolled nursing pathway and then apply through that occupation. Um, with my spouse, um, Shifa is asking, I did diploma of mechanical engineer in India. I'm working as a machine operator in my field. Is there a chance for 190 or 491? Um, Shifa, unfortunately, machine operator is not a skilled occupation. Um, I think uh, there are a few um, applicants who were invited last year who were working in some of the critical um, sectors, uh, especially mask, uh, mask uh, making companies and all those kind of things. Um, as far as I know, currently immigration essay is very particular in terms of not inviting the machine operators because uh, most of the machine operators, they don't fall under the skill level one, two, three. Um, they fall under skill level four. So you should be working as a, a mechanical engineering technologist or mechanical engineer itself, or draft person. I'm at this asking if I have seven years of experience um, as a restaurant manager, um, 70 points, how many chance for 491? So uh, Ahmed, if you are a restaurant manager and staying in Adelaide, then mostly it's 491, 12 months experience required. If you want to get 190, you should be moving to regional um, area or you should be um, looking at the talented innovator program. But in most of the cases for restaurant manager, um, it will be only um, 491. Aishan Fernando is asking three years of skilled experience offshore in accounting to join University of Adelaide for master's in accounting and finance. Is there a possibility of 190 thereafter? Um, look, if you have not started studying yet, um, then we're talking about after two years, the, that time the requirements could be different. In current requirements, if you are an accounting graduate from South Australia, if you want to apply for 190 directly, 
um, the the only pathway is a talented innovator. And in talented innovator, the primary pathway would be employment stream. So if you get a job which is close to eighty thousand dollars salary in those um, priority sectors uh, or company which are working in those sectors. Um, then yes, you can apply for 190. In the rest of the cases, it's only 491. The other thing for 190 in most of cases is full-time employment. So if you have a full-time job, then yes, you can um, target for uh, 190. I've completed six months of employment in Adelaide under telecommunication engineer, am I eligible for 491? So Kaivalya, yes, um, if you are an engineer as a telecommunication engineer with skill assessment in that from Engineers Australia, six months of experience, minimum 20 hours a week, may be eligible for 491, yes. Um, so it's case to case. Again, um, we just need to make sure that the new requirements remain the same uh, for 491. Mohammed is asking about uh, Master of Social Work, currently working as an employment consultant in WorkSkill SA from February with positive skill assessment as a community worker. What are the chances of 190? Um, look, Mohammed, uh, again, your qualifications are different. Skill assessment is different um, as in the uh, the pathway, and then uh, the, the job is different. Employment consultant, again, it's not highly relevant to social work or uh, community worker, but then it you can put together a submission and also if you are an ESSEC graduate then they can consider you in different stream which includes the long-term resident stream as well. So it really depends on your detailed profile um, obviously but then there are chances for 491. For 190 ideally you should be looking at getting a job in your field of studies itself. Um, Shani is asking about as a graduate EN pathway, six months experience um, with 95 points. Uh, can I apply for 491? Yes, uh, absolutely. So as long as the Department of Immigration South Australia does not change the requirement, the, the requirement for uh, enrolled nurse was three months experience post qualification as an enrolled nurse. So as long as you meet that requirement, you'll be fine. Um, obviously, they changed the program uh, in March um, because of um, the limited space left for 491 visas, but then eventually um, in the new financial year, they will have more allocation. So they will be coming up with um, different requirements and they will be open to accept the application directly rather than everything under 491 goes through talent and innovator itself. All right, so last question. I have 10 years of experience in IT infrastructure as a system admin, IBM India. I've completed biotech uh, in computer science from Rajasthan, a possibility for me to apply for the PR. Um, look, um, I would recommend you to be in touch because, again, your qualification is not relevant uh, in IT itself. Uh, sorry, it is relevant to IT, but then uh, you are an offshore applicant. So offshore applicant would be uh, required at least eight years of experience and uh, seven each in IELTS or PT. Uh, but then it, as long as the immigration essay requires the, that particular occupation in the offshore application list as well. So as long as they include your occupation in the offshore list, you should be able to apply for ROI. Um, you just need to wait and see if uh, they do have your occupation on the list. Or, um, uh, offshore skill assessment in developer programmer and working as an IT technician and or deployment engineer in Adelaide for more than 18 months. And I don't know if it is close related to my occupation or not any chance for 491 or 190. Um, programmer developer, um, develop, you're working as an IC, IT technician or deployment engineer. Look, um, Ajay, I think it really depends on your task and duties, but um, if you're working as an IT technician, if it's an ICT help desk technician or hardware technician kind of thing, then it's not an ACS occupation, it's, an, uh, it's a TRA occupation. So in that case, it will not, you, you won't meet the closely relevant um, requirement. So you might have to get a job which is in any occupation, which is assessed by ACS to be uh, meeting the state nomination requirements. So if you have detailed tasks and duties, I would recommend you um, give us a call, book an appointment, and we can discuss case to case on your particular profile. Well, um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, it was wonderful to see a lot of people here. Um, and as soon as we have more updates on the Immigration South Australia state nomination list and the requirements, we'll be obviously doing um, some Facebook Lives and other sessions as well through our social media channels. So if you haven't liked our social media channels, obviously do follow them. You'll get a lot of updates for each um, state nomination as well as the 189 updates. Um, I would be obviously expecting some updates for 189 this financial year as well.
Thank you very much.